Okay, so the one thing that I want to make sure that you understand is when you go to graph these, uh, there's going to be a really quick way that you can graph them. And so when I start to graph these, I can put these numbers in and figure out my y values, and I can graph it that way. But there's also a pattern that you can always use too. And so for this one, if I put in a negative 6, negative 6 plus 3 is going to give me a negative 3, and then I have negative 3 squared minus 9. Well, negative 3 squared is going to give me a positive 9, so 9 minus 9 is going to give me 0. Now, the other spot that is going to give me a 0 is if I put in a 0 for x. If I did 0 plus 3 squared minus 9, that's also going to give me 9 minus 9, which gives me 0. I have points that repeat each other, okay, because this is symmetrical because this is a parabola. So the next point I could put in is I could put in a negative 5. So if I put in negative 5, negative 5 plus 3 squared minus 9, well, negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2 squared minus 9. Negative 2 squared is 4, and 4 minus 9 is negative 5. So if I put in a negative 5, I get a negative 5. And because it's symmetrical, if I put in a negative 1, negative 1 plus 3 squared minus 9, that's going to give me a positive 2 squared minus 9, which is going to give me 4 minus 9, which also gives me negative 5. Then if I put in the next numbers, now I'm not expecting you to do this. I just kind of want you to see like where the numbers actually come from because it's kind of cool. If I put in a negative 4, I'm going to have negative 4 plus 3 squared minus 9. Well, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1 squared minus 9. Negative 1 squared is 1 minus 9, which is negative 8. Now again, if I put in a negative 2, negative 2 plus 3 squared minus 9, that's going to give me 1 squared minus 9. So I also get 1 minus 9, which is negative 8. Then if I put in the last one that is left, which is my negative 3, when I put in a negative 3, I'm going to get negative 3 plus 3 squared minus 9. So negative 3 plus 3 is 0 squared minus 9, and 0 minus 9 is negative 9. Now if I look at that pattern, which we've looked at in the um, day 1 unit, that right there is my vertex. Now, when I look at the actual problem, any time that I see the actual problem and I see x plus 3 squared minus 9, I'm going to take the opposite of that. So if that's a positive 3, that then becomes a negative 3. So I can look at any one of them and see that the vertex is negative 3, negative 9. So if I go to negative 3, negative 9, that's going to be my vertex. Now, when I go to graph these, I go back to my parent function, and my parent function is y is equal to x squared. So if I actually plugged in the points for my parent function, if I plug those in, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, and I didn't leave enough room for 3 squared, but 3 squared is 9, I could go over 1, 1 squared is 1. Then I go back to the vertex, over 2, 2 squared is 4. So that would be my next point. Then I go back to the vertex, and then I go over 3, 3 squared is 9. Now I could also go back to the vertex, there's enough room on this one, to go over 4, and 4 squared is 16. So if that's 9 plus 7, I believe would be here, that would be my point. Now, the vertex is also where the axis of symmetry goes through. So if you wanted to, you wouldn't have to put in the other points, which are negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3, because they're basically going to just be symmetrical. So what you could do is look at where your axis of symmetry would be, and we can actually draw that if we want to. If we draw the axis of symmetry, then something like this, 
this, then we do the same thing on the other side. So if this is 1 over, we want to make this one 1 on the other side. This one is 2 over, we want to make this one 2 over. This one is 3, so we want to make this 3. And then at the top, my line is kind of crooked, 1, 2, 3, 4. So then I want to make that 1, 2, 3, 4. And you can join it together on your paper. It's a little bit harder when I'm doing it um, with my tablet. So the other thing that we're looking at, too, is we're looking at absolute values. So if we go to graph the absolute value, we can actually find the vertex of the absolute value the exact same way. So it's going to be at negative 3, negative 9. Negative 3, negative 9. So that's my vertex. <clears throat> now the difference is it doesn't do the same thing as the parabola. It actually goes up differently. It has a different pattern. So if I wanted to see like what my, my next points are, I could put in my negative 4 and my negative 2. Now it does have an axis of symmetry, so it does work out that way. So we're going to have negative 4 plus 3 minus 9. Well, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1 minus 9. The absolute value of negative 1 is going to give me positive 1 minus 9, which is negative 8, which is actually the same thing. Now if I put a negative 2 in, you can kind of see that that's going to be the same thing. So it starts out to where it looks the same as the parabola. But when I go to put my negative 5 in, it's going to start looking a little different. So when I put my negative 5 in, I get negative absolute value of negative 5 plus 3 minus 9. Well, negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2 minus 9. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2 minus 9, which is negative 7. So this is going to give me negative 7. What happens is it starts looking like straight, a straight line. Okay, So it looks like a straight line. And since it kind of looks like a line, this would be the slope. So my next point would go up 1 over 1. So on this side, it has a slope of a positive 1. On this slope, it's going to have a slope of a negative 1. So when I did do my next one, if I put in a negative 6, we have the absolute value of negative 6 plus 3 minus 9. Well, that's going to give me the absolute value of negative 3 minus 9, which is going to give me 3 minus 9, which is negative 6, which does follow the pattern of a line with a, a slope of 1 on this side and a slope of negative 1 on this side. This one's a little bit easier to draw with my tablet. So it looks something like this. So transformations are, uh, what is the, where is it moving from the parent function? And the parent function for the absolute value of x is basically 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, 1, and negative 2, 2. So everything that just takes the opposite sign.